talking about the supplement in more more detail. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about what kind of format it's in and, and what's the recommended dose? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so the formats we sell today are three formats. One is a, a berry flavored uh, uh, sachet that I just showed you right there. This contains about 500 milligrams of, of urolithin A. Um, and the reason we put 500 milligram uh, is uh, this is the uh, those we see, start to see uh, statistically significant effects on muscle strength uh, at this dose. And we've shown also that it improves mitochondrial and cellular health, but you know, in our clinical studies. And then uh, I personally myself take a gram because uh, the higher dose gives you even more bioavailability. And, and I know, and we have, we have published, or we are about to publish, uh, that the higher dose also, in addition to strength, improves uh, peak VO2 and, and things like uh, walking distance. So it starts to hit more on the endurance side of, of performance. So now back to your question on other formats. The second format we have is, is a protein shake. Uh, this contains about 20 grams of whey protein, very highly pure whey protein. Uh, with 500 milligrams of MitoPure, the reason to combine it with, uh, with whey protein is that, of course, with aging, uh, you get a decline in muscle mass. Uh, and, and when you add MitoPure, you're also impacting on the muscle quality and the muscle strength. So you're kind of adding two, two in one uh, kind of a solution. And then uh, I don't have it here to show, but uh, the third format is, is a soft gel pill. So you take two of them, each contains 250 milligrams. Uh, and it's a, it's a bottle with uh, 60 pills. With or without food? Does it matter? Yeah, so yeah, on the bioavailability part, uh, we, we, we did a clinical study that we published a few years back where we started giving in what is called as increasing doses. Uh, so you first take a set of uh, participants, you give them, we gave them 250 milligrams, and then we saw that the, the dose was bioavailable. And then we upped it to 500 in another cohort, and then we gave one gram. And so we got a very sort of linear increase in the blood levels of, uh, of urolithin A. Uh, now, 250 milligram uh, takes probably longer, but uh, we are studying 500 and a gram. And then what we did was we did what is called as the, uh, the food effect. So we gave mostly all our studies are giving uh, the product on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. And then we said, okay, the same people, if the next day they take it in, in a yogurt or a muesli with, with, a, with a breakfast, what happens? And nothing changes. So the bioavailability remains the same. So it's something that, uh, you know, the, the berry product, uh, actually you can mix it in your muesli every morning or your, or your morning yogurt. Um, you can mix the protein shake in a smoothie. And so it doesn't, food effect doesn't really exist with this molecule. It's a very stable inert molecule that, yeah. Is, is actually is natural and has been around evolutionary, you know, so it's very safe as well. How long does it take to take effect? I mean, how long should you be taking it for? Yeah, so it's a good question. Uh, in our clinical studies uh, that we have completed, we start seeing uh, cellular effects at the biological level when we do the biopsies and, and we look at the mitochondria in the muscle, for example. Uh, the effect is uh, already there around four weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, at uh, eight weeks, we can start uh, seeing changes on peak VO2, for example. And uh, the strength is really, uh, the effect on strength is very visible at four months at 500 or a gram. And so this is like exercise, right? And that's what I say. Uh, most of exercise intervention studies really show an effect after three, four months and six months longer, right? And so it is something you can just expect an effect after one or, you know, taking it for a week. You really need to take it for, uh, for, for a few weeks or two months at least to, to see an effect. How about uh, safety? Uh In our clinical trials, we've done like six now and we have uh, another few running. That's about 350 plus participants uh, with different age groups, uh, athletes, middle-aged, old, older adults. And, and uh, what we see is it's, we have never really seen any adverse effect with this in, in our studies in, in, in any of these trials. So it's a very safe molecule. And as I mentioned, 30, 40% people are naturally making it, right? So uh, if you are a very, if you really are blessed with a gut microbiome and you're eating your nuts and drinking juice, a pomegranate juice every day, you, you already have it. You've, you know, our ancestors have had it since evolution. Uh, uh, so that's the safety. What, what we have done in parallel is 
We've done a very uh, robust uh, toxicology program as well uh, in, in rodents where you do uh, subchronic toxicity and chronic toxicity. And then we've taken all this data and we've uh, submitted to the FDA for uh, an approval that is called as GRASS, which means generally regarded as safe. And the FDA has looked at all our dossier and said, wow, this is really, you know, top level uh, safety data. And they've approved it as a grass in the U.S. And that allowed us actually to, to start selling this product to the, to the mass. So you're looking at it, it kind of exclusively in healthy people. Have you, have you looked at it in terms of any, in any kind of illness? Uh, no, well, the, 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 that, that's a tricky sort of, if you go mm. into the illness, then a supplement yeah. is not a supplement or, and a nutrition product, then uh, it becomes more of a therapeutic product. Uh, what, what we do in our studies is, uh, of course, we look at the top athletes, and uh, but there is a scope for hospitalized people because they also need to eat nutrition. So we are now running a study in Canada with, uh, with people uh, in a model that mimics uh, prolonged ho hospitalization stay, because that is known to induce uh, muscle wasting and mitochondrial dysfunction. So we are looking there. Uh, we are looking at uh, the, the, the trial that will be published in a month in JAMA uh, open. Uh, we selected older adults, but older adults who were sedentary and not didn't have a very high uh, mobility, for example. So. They are healthy, but uh, they are on the trajectory to, to becoming unhealthy down the road. So we see great effects there. Uh, as I mentioned, there are labs around the world studying its effect on, uh, on neurodegeneration. So I'm sure somebody will study its effects in uh, a, a disease-like indication. How many uh, kind of clinical trials do you have ongoing at the moment? Yeah, so we have published uh, two trials, uh, one in Nature Metabolism, uh, which was the first in human study showing the safety, uh, showing the different doses, how they improve bioavailability. Uh, and, and then we took muscle biopsies and, and blood to show different mitochondrial biomarkers being improved after four weeks. After this trial, we published uh, another one, the 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 head-to-head -head versus the glass of pomegranate juice and, and the, showing that, uh, that you get about a six to seven fold higher bioavailability with, with the supplement compared to diet, for example, so, and the gut microbiome data also was part of it. Now we're about to publish two more trials uh, in leading journals, one in middle age population uh, showing after four months, we are improving muscle strength significantly and aerobic endurance. And then another one is coming out in older adults, showing that uh, older adults, uh, when they do something like a leg press, uh, they have more resistance to fatigue after being on, on the product versus placebo. So this is coming out. And now we have two ongoing studies, one in Australia in elite athletes and one in sort of the immobilized population that I mentioned in Canada. So we have six trials overall. We are also running, as I mentioned, the study with the, with the kit. Uh, where you can take the kid at your home and we can tell you if you're a producer or not. So seven right. trials. You said that the, the buck were doing like a, a trial on, on, on the brain cognitive. I, I think they're looking preclinically, not clinic, uh, clinically. Pre -clin yeah. Preclinically they're, they, you know, they have all these access to all these great models of neurodegeneration and cognitive decline. And, and they're studying um, the effect uh, of uh, this, molecule postbiotic called urolitin A on different models. The National Institute of Health just came out, uh, I believe last year in, in a paper in Nature Neuroscience, showing that they did a whole screen of hundreds of compounds to see which was the most promising mitophagy inducer in, in models of Alzheimer's disease. And they showed that out of the top three, they found urolitin A was the number one. Uh, so urolitin A was basically inducing mitophagy in neurons, but again, all preclinical data. Preclinical, right? So we, we think it would get across the blood-brain barrier? It, it does. Uh, we can actually, in the biopsies uh, also, we, we, we go and look at it and it's there in the muscles uh, at similar concentrations as plasma. Uh, we've looked in the brain, uh, of course, not in human studies, but in preclinical models. And the, it, it's, uh, it's in the brain and it's, uh, yeah, as, as I told, the NIH study actually showed that it was causing uh, it was uh, causing all these great benefits in in neurons. It's total psychosis. But do animals have the so like mice? Do they have the same kind of thing as us? Like forty percent of them can can do it naturally, or 
we don't know. <laughs> yeah, so the thing with Miles, and that's why I always it's difficult to translate from mice to men. And I always say mice are not great. Uh, humans are not great models for mice because always you have this great data in, in mice and, and a lot of things don't pan out the way. Uh, we are very genetically diverse. We all eat different diets. Mice, on the other hand, they, they live really like the five-star hotel lifestyle. They're all given uh, sterilized food and they all drink, you know, sterilized water and they, you know, at least experimental uh, mice uh, really get it good. And, and so, yeah, what you're seeing there versus what you're seeing uh, in humans is always the challenge. But the beauty with this molecule is at least the mechanism of action from worms to mice to humans. Uh, there are very few molecules that have shown the same effect on the same organ uh, across different species. And that's really the, the plus point uh, of, of urolithinase. 